this lesson is on placental abruption so in this list we are going to talk about the pathophysiology behind why it occurs we will also talk about important risk factors for having a placental abruption and we are going to talk about symptoms and important classic complications along with how it is diagnosed and treated placental abruption is also known as abruptio placenta it's an obstetrical condition involving premature placental detachment or separation from the endometrium so it's going to be where the placenta detaches from the uterine wall prematurely before it's supposed to and separation can be partial or complete so placental abruption is a rare but serious obstetrical condition it occurs in approximately 1% of pregnancies although the severe placental abruptions are going to be only in 0.1%. It is actually one of the most important causes of obstetrical and neonatal morbidity. So abruptio placenta is uh, going to be that premature separation of placenta from the uterine wall or from the endometrial lining. So normally the placenta is going to be attached into endometrium in order to absorb blood in the nutrients and allow those nutrients to go to the fetus. So now the placental abruption means separation of this placenta prematurely and it's going to occur after 20 weeks of gestation and mostly they are going to occur before 37 week of gestation now more specifically what happened is that there is a bleeding that occurs at the decidual placental interface so the decidual placental interface is the way the placenta attaches to the de decidua of the endometrial lining so there starts to become a bleed and that bleeding starts to grow and leads to hematoma and it's going to be a collection of blood this hematoma leads to the separation of the placenta from the uterine wall and then ultimately the hematoma becomes so large that it starts to compress onto the placental structures themselves so this leads to the blood and nutrient supply to the fetus gets affected and then they are going to have the issues with fetal distress and other complications one important point we have to note is that bleeding in placental abruption is totally depends on the location of the placenta where it is attached in the uterus so there may be overflow of the bleeding or they may not be bleeding at all in few patients that is they may be concealed bleeding inside the vagina so before we talk about signs and symptoms, let's talk about the risk factors for getting a placental abruption. So the number one most risk factor is maternal hypertension or maternal high blood pressure. This is very significant and important risk factor to look out. Other risk factors that have a placental abruption is a maternal age over 35 years or maternal age under 20 years. If the patient has a history of placental abruption in previous pregnancy, then there is a high risk. So again, in the next pregnancy, there may be chances of placental abruption. We can also see issues with abdominal trauma as being potential risk factor for abdominal trauma during pregnancy. This may include car accidents or falls. So if the pregnant patient fall on the ground onto their stomach, this can be an abdominal trauma that can increase the risk of having placental abruption. Another important risk factor to look out for placental abruption is smoking. Smoking is actually going to be increases the chances and risk of placental abruption. Another risk factor is alcohol use during pregnancy, having multiple gestations. So having multiple fetus, having a male fetus is also an another risk factor. Preeclampsia is another risk factor for placental abruption. Or having extra amniotic fluid, this also increases the risk of placental abruption. So let's move on to the signs and symptoms of placental abruption. One of them going to be bleeding or vaginal bleeding. So this bleeding may be concealed as we mentioned before and it can also represent it as bloody amniotic fluid. 80% of the placental abruption cases will have bleeding and some 20% of the patients will have a concealed bleeding as we mentioned before. So this bleeding will be a painful vaginal bleeding. If there is a painful vaginal bleeding during pregnancy, we have to think about abruption placenta. 
pain is sudden onset of pain that's constant and persistent and is going to be localized to lower back and the uterus so there is going to be uterine tenderness of times so again we have to think about the placental abruption uterine contractions are going to be high frequency so because of the suppression of placenta uterus starts to contract at a higher frequency and then this also important point here is that there is going to be a fetal distress so maternal complications will include disseminated intravascular coagulation this is actually going to be the most common cause of dic in pregnancy and it occurs in 20% of the patients who have placental abruption so other important maternal complications we have to look for is for shock as well because of the loss of fluid and anemia that causes blood loss can increase the risk of mortality in these patients we can also see acute renal failure as well again due to the fluid losses fetal complications include premature birth so premature labor can occur along with this we can also see low birth weight and asphyxiam is also seen because there is not enough blood flow and blood supply to the fetus due to the compression of that enlarging hematoma this can cause asphyxia and in some other cases there can be a stillbirth or neonatal death due to the significant compromises to the blood flow oxygen delivery and nutrient delivery so the baby with placental abruption is actually categorized into four classes so the first class is zero class that is asymptomatic so asymptomatic means there may be no signs and symptoms and because of this we actually don't see any clinically class 1 placental abruption which is considered mild this is going to be the most common class of placental abruption and it occurs in 50% of the cases where there is either some vaginal bleeding or none but may not be no fetal distress very important so you don't see any fetal issues on external class 2 placental abruption occurs in quarter of the cases placental abruption this is where there is up to moderate amount of vaginal bleeding there may be no vaginal bleeding also may be concealed bleeding so we may not actually see vaginal bleeding and it meant moderate amounts we can also see other issues like maternal tachycardia or maternal high rate heart rate there can also be orthostatic changes to both blood pressure and heart rate as well severe to moderate uh, uterine tenderness then also we have to see the important changes in blood work including hypofibrinogenemia so we have to check the fibrogen levels class 3 placental abruption is severe and this is going to be affecting most of the cases and it can again be a concealed bleed or maybe heavy amount of bleeding there is going to be maternal shock in this particular cases and then there can be severe painful technic to uterus we may also see fetal death in class 3 as well the most important point here we have to note is class 2 and class 3 represent complete separation whereas in class 1 there is a still connection of placenta to decidua allowing the fetus to still get the nutrients and the blood and oxygen supply coming to diagnosis of placental abruption it is going to be clinical diagnosis on certain things and uh, like history taking and clinical findings and clinical examination so we are going to some signs and symptoms we have talked before we may see a vaginal bleeding and pain we may we also see a fetal distress when doing external fetal monitoring ultrasound can be used to rule out placenta previa that can be one thing we can do it so we may recommend complete blood count cbc blood test and hemoglobin levels we have to check and the clotting factor well once the clinician has made the diagnosis of placental abruption we have to treat often time treatment of placental abruption is going to require emergency management so we are going to monitor continuously the maternal status and the fetal status and iv fluids can be given to the pregnant patient and supplemental oxygen so if there is any fetal distress we are going to do an emergency cesarean section in this patient they can be risky because they often will have a coagulopathies like dic so this is about the placental abruption i hope you like my video if so please do not forget to like and share this video with your friends and family and please please subscribe to my channel for more lessons like this and once again thank you so much for watching my video